Hey guys, Mike here from Messi Entertainment. Just doing a quick video, just showing off some features that we've added in uh, the new version of UI Styles. So uh, the obvious one, we've tidied up the GUI just a little bit, just making things a little bit clearer. We can enable and disable uh, styles and components now. Um, I'm just going to show you a quick example of this contact form style I've got. Uh, whereas we can just create it in the scene. So I've actually got three input fields there, a button, and I'm just creating that in my canvas. So all your styles you can do that way now. Um, so you can make some pretty cool stuff. Uh, what I'm going to do is go through a few of the changes. So what I'm going to do is get an input field. So now I mean, you'll see, if we look at this contact form, you'll see we've got quite a few objects in here. So what I've done is I've made a, a type so you can quickly look over uh, and see whether it's the rec transform, the image, you know, what component it is. Uh, then you can see if it's enabled, disabled, or a few other options we'd give it, which we'll go over in a minute. And then the IDs on the end. And obviously, when once we've dropped it down, it's exactly the same as it was. So we've added a few new things. So if we look at the input field, you'll see we've got some references. So what they are is obviously, if I just create that quickly, you'll see that the input field has references. So it's got um, a, a target graphic, uh, a text and a placeholder. And notice that they've just been set. So when we, when we create these here, we're setting those. Now, for that to happen, I've had to add these references here. So on the input field component, uh, we're telling it what what other components within the, within this style are the references. So what are, what is the text? It'll only find the text components if it knows it's looking for the text. Uh, if it's a target graphic, it'll show you the uh, text and images because you can have either one. So. Um, the same applies on all the components now. So if you get a, if you get a drop down, it's going to be the same. You're going to have some references there. Um, it does set them all. We've also improved the drag and drop, which I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you with that contact form just to show you how good it actually is. Um, so with the image, we've added is mask, so we can make a um, a, um, a ma um, sorry we can make a mask with an image now. Uh, which we couldn't do before, we didn't have a style for an image. So we don't actually have a style or a component for the mask. We just turn an image into a mask. Um, with, um, with the text as well, we've actually got this, uh, we can actually change the value of the text now as well. So that was needed for, I mean, if we look at a uh, input field, when we create the... Um, the placeholder and text we 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 fill the placeholder but we actually empty the value of the text so that's actually what we can do here so what i've done here is if you look at the input field the text we've ticked the tick the text to say we want to change the value and we're, we're setting it to null all right so uh if we look at this as well so if I was to go to the placeholder and say I do want to change all the text to um, something else, you can see that the text is all updated now as well. So it's just a value the same as all the others that we can play about with now. So also you'll notice if we go down and look at this text, you'll see by default, so I'll show you that again, if we just create an input field, uh, we've got two of those now, so I just, well, we'll just delete one. Um, but you'll see, if you go to text, you'll see that rich text is uh, is enabled by default now and it's turned off, but it's not on the placeholder. So, I mean, you're probably aware of if you create and, you know, if you get a Unity input field, uh, it doesn't like having the text with rich text if it was to. And it'll give you this warning. So basically, what I'm trying to say is, um, when when we create things now, we we give it some default values, and that's just so that we can we can just um, 
create them and place them straight away. Uh, so scroll right. So everything now has got some default values if you create it like that. So they're basically ready to go. Whereas before we'd create something and it'd be empty like that, like a text would be now. The the values are just empty because we can. Oh, actually, it's not actually the width and height is being controlled so that when we create it it is um, you know the sort of size you'd be expected to get rather than just a square right so another pretty cool feature we've we've got notice as well now I have no canvas but if I go to create something so let me just delete these get back to the input field the input fields a bit easier to look at so if I go to create that now, I can only create it in the canvas. If I had canvases here, so let's say I had canvas one, canvas two, and so on. If I now go to create those, uh, it does find the canvases. So I can choose what one to put that in. So. Let's look at these enable and disabled. So let's look at the placeholder because that's what we're seeing now. Let's make a few more of these. Just so we can see it will happen to as many as we have. Um, right, so let's get the placeholder. Let's right click it and then go to component state. That's what these are, these enables here. The component state is enabled. Um, so that is disabled so obviously the whole style is going to update that that, that um, component will be ignored what we can also do is disable and always remove it so if we go to the placeholder what always remove will do is always remove the component I need to add the apply button on the end here again I forgot to do that that will be put back there so you can see now that I've applied that and all of our placeholder uh, components have been removed. Notice the game object is still there though. If we didn't want that, then we could always delete. And then the actual game object has been removed from all of them. Uh, it's not much of a big deal to be honest because we can go to component state and then enable and always add. Uh, and that will just add the component back there. So that's a pretty cool feature. Um, you can also do this with the styles. So you can go to style state, enable or disable. That way when you're updating the whole category or, or looping through scenes and stuff, you can just disable styles and they won't be included. And then we can also get the component state from the top level here. So let's say we want all of these. I mean, let's do it. Say, let's look at this contact form. If we wanted to change the state of all of those, to, um, what we would do is pick it from up here. So I can go to enable and always add. So pretty cool, this, uh, this feature. I'm quite... Uh, Quite happy with this update, there's quite a few pretty cool features going on. Uh, another good one, let's just delete that. I've got an asset here that was downloaded from the asset store, it's just full of um, ready made uh, UI components and stuff. So let's, let's take a look at a few of those. We've got a few input fields here. So what if we want to make styles out of this? Well, we've improved the way that this happens now. We can just drag that in there. And there you go. You've got your, your style. We're going to go a little bit better than that, though. What we're going to do is open these up and name things properly. So, I mean, that image, I mean in this case, it's okay because we've only got a placeholder text and image. So, But really, that image in the style is going to be named the same as that image so I'm actually going to change that to icon because uh, I think that's more better suited that one's probably better suited just as a line for me I know what a line was it's that line at the end there 
the image to me is the you know the white image background. I mean that should probably be called background as well to be fair. But uh, and then so down here we've got um, one with a button on it. So you can see here we've got two images. So UI stars isn't going to like this because um, as you as you probably know if you're a user of UI styles we the path uh, that path there is the path to the object. So we can't actually have two images the, the same here and to be quite honest with you you shouldn't anyway I mean you should be naming your stuff properly if you're uh, building a proper UI so uh, I would call that shadow and then I would call this button so this is actually an image he hasn't actually so these, these these are prefabs from someone else's asset I don't know who the, who, who they are um, they're pretty tidy um, you know it's got a pretty tidy style that's why I like them um, but yeah they're not named in the best way so there's my button now so you can see I've got text there well that text belongs to the input field so I don't really want to call my button text text I could because it was um, it, it's not it's you know it's a child of the button so it's not in the same root but uh, nevertheless when I create that let's just create these now so we drag these in so if I open that up now, we've got quite a few. You can see we've got, uh, so here I've, I've put an object name here. So you can see on the left hand side, these are the names of the object. So it's good practice to make your styles that way really. And then because obviously we've got two placeholders here. So we look over here to the type and we can see that that one's rec transform. That one's the text. So that's another thing we added now as well, rec transform. We can add a rec transform component and just um, just do the rec transform uh, and that's what that's what this is doing so with the text obviously we could delete this one if we wanted and use the rec transform within the text um, if people aren't using this one now I mean we could remove that but well before I just remove it I see how people are using it um, so what I'm going to do on these input fields is remove the positioning just so that they're not all in the same place uh, and that's it I mean that's that's all it takes to create styles for anything I mean it's not referencing these prefabs so you can delete them prefabs it has just completely made a style that uh, uses it and notice we've dragged those in but if we go to our input you'll see that it's, it's uh, set our references so even though we've dragged it in there uh, and this is like a contact form here so if we was to name these because again he's got three things in here called input and I'm, a I'm actually going to change these and I'll show you why uh, so that one's going to be email. Uh, that one's going to be message. Right, so they're named better now. Let's just drag that contact form in there. Uh, and then let's just delete everything. And then straight away, just get it back in there there it is so you can make styles now I mean it's pretty pretty awesome massive time saver something else we've improved is the custom component so if I show you the custom now oh and just before I move on actually when we create this and we go to new create new canvas rather than creating it in one that's already created the, the default settings for the canvas so it creates a canvas and it, it just uses some default settings those default settings can be found in preferences uh, so just head over here and you'll see default canvas settings okay um, yeah so now let's look at the the custom style 
uh, just drag a component in there. Oh, I was supposed to move these as well. These uh, these are obsolete now because we've got the component state. Uh, so you won't see those by the time you get your hand on this. So the excluded properties are a lot better now. Um, as you can see, we're doing some filtering. So if we go to the preferences, you'll see some default excluded properties. So you would have noticed all these values were coming up before and it wasn't looking very tidy so we've, we've added some filtering. We've also excluded Unity events by default. That was a problem we were having. Uh, it was overwriting these so by default now it just excludes them because it's using a template in the scene so it can't really reference anything in the hierarchy. So it can just ignore them if for whatever reason you don't want to you can just remove things from there and you can add them in there so what I'm going to show you here you can see that uh, the word name is a variable that you shouldn't use because you'll be uh, hiding unity um, inherited members let's just remove name from there you'll see that it's finding name now in the uh, members of that and I would want to exclude that because that would actually change the name of the game object uh, and obviously if it did that it would lose the find by name anyway so we'd never want that. So to add that in here, I mean you won't have to add name because by default they'll already be added. So yeah I mean that's covered up pretty everything, it uh, looks a lot better now, it's a lot more tidier made it so that we can find out a little bit more about the style without opening it yeah so if I've missed anything uh, drop us a message uh, if not cheers for using UI styles cheers for all the feedback and uh, I'll speak to you soon